um, and that I work uh, with have worked with Bill Lackenberg, um, uh, on the national on the uh, on the bipartisan calling for national public uh, public radio. Um, the in fact right today we are releasing a poll. Our national public radio is releasing a poll that we conducted jointly by Democracy Board, uh, which is the lead uh, organization that by doing polling research on the Democratic side. Um, and conducted jointly with Resurgent Republic, um, that is the polling organization on the conservative side, um, you know, led, uh, led by or initiated by Karl Rove uh, on his side, um, and we're releasing a poll together today um, about the state of the U.S. Uh, election. So that um, I think I'll, I'll be able to talk about where I think the election is, but also give you a fair reading of where the uh, Republicans think it is at the same time. Um, and, uh, and I'm not sure we differ so much on the dynamic, but we may differ on where the end point is. Uh, who's going to get across that line first? Doesn't, but it doesn't necessarily change the dynamics of U.S. election or the dynamics of what will happen, you know, uh, afterwards. So I guess you want to know who's going to win. Uh, it's, uh, so boring, uh, so superficial. Rather. I thought I'd instead go into analyzing the dynamics, but. Uh, but I, I will go. I will go right to the uh, heart of it, uh, because the the survey for National Public Radio is going to be uh, released uh, um, within the hour. Um, so it's um, we're not quite breaking the uh, embargo on the on the survey again. It's a joint survey of Democracy for um, and Resurgent uh, Republic. Uh, it's a sur it's a national survey, but it's also a survey that has a matching survey in the battleground states. Um, so, as when you elect the U.S. president, battleground states uh, is what it matters, matters, because that's what gets you to an electoral college uh, majority. Um, and what this poll shows, it shows the president with a four-point lead in the battleground states. Um, as the poll that was published a couple days ago, uh, it shows Mitt Romney with a one-point lead nationally uh, in the popular uh, vote. Um, these results are actually. They were almost designed for me to be able to talk about the battleground um, and for the Republican pollster to talk about the, the, the national uh, uh, toss-up election uh, in the popular vote. Um, except that the U.S. Constitution doesn't matter. And so then what's more uh, what is most important uh, for you is who's going to be president of the United States. Um, and the results um, of, the, of this poll in the battleground, but also the results for many other polls conducted in, uh, in battleground states um, you know, over this last week shows the president with a pretty stable um, lead, um, you know, state by state. Uh, in fact, if you uh, if you look uh, this morning at the Real Clear Politics, uh, which is a, a fairly Republican-aligned uh, website in terms of its projection of where the Electoral College vote is, it shows uh, President Obama with a 290. Uh, Electoral College majority um, to 248 uh, you know, for Romney. Um, I think it may get to 300 uh, in the end. Now, uh, now that you know, and, and, and again, I'm emphasizing, I do not see in the polling, and I've looked at a lot of polling, any movement away from the small lead that the president has to draw across those uh, across those states. Uh, the um, if that is right. State by state polling and this NPR poll in the battleground state is right. Uh, it won't be an election night like 2000 or 2004, where the presidency is decided by one state uh, with a very narrow vote and count and us counting the counting the vote uh, into the into the wee hours to see who's president of the United States or into uh, to the next day. Um, if that is right, he should win with enough uh, electoral college majority um, to be in a fairly Strong and legitimate position come out and coming at, you know out of that. Now, um, so I think the president is going to be elected uh, president. The in the battle when we get beyond the battleground when we look at the overall popular vote um, because that matters uh, in terms of the strength of the president. What happens after? You know, does the president have a uh, also have a a, the, a popular vote win? Um, that enables uh, you know him to deal with the polarized gridlock Washington uh, and break through on so many issues that are important to us domestically, 
uh, are also important, uh, you know, globally. Um, even though the, you know, this poll for NPR shows uh, this with a one-point Romney uh, advantage, and if you look at the average of all the public polls, um, depends on who you're, who, which monitor you're doing, um, you have roughly a toss-up in the, uh, you know, popular uh, vote. Um, I actually think that the most of those polls are are probably underestimating President Obama's vote. The reason for that, and the reason for that, that relates to things that are important to talking about the two big coalitions uh, in the United States, uh, because what groups are part of those coalitions and what values are at the center of those coalitions have a big uh, impact on uh, where our country goes and what our politics is about, and, and in some sense interacts with um, similar developments. Uh, you know. Uh, here uh, in Jerusalem, uh, in Israel. The, uh, when I talk about the, you know, what, what's happening in the vote, the biggest question, there's two big questions. The first one is, has to do with the diverse population of the United States. The United States is increasingly diverse, increasingly immigrant uh, you know, population of a country. Um, and not many polls have, uh, are properly reflecting that diversity. We know that uh, in, in 2008, 26% of the electorate was minority, 75% of them voted for Obama. Uh, that number is, is certainly going to be that large and could grow uh, in this election uh, beyond that. There are very few national polls that uh, represent that, uh, that diversity, that change, uh, particularly on Hispanic growth, uh, which is uh, reacting very much against uh, the position the Republican Party has taken on immigration. Um, which is proven motivating for those voters um, and are giving Barack Obama big advantages. So this NPR poll that I'm talking about, which has a one-point Romney lead, um, has uh, Obama with only a one-point lead amongst young voters, um, has him with 55% support amongst Hispanics, um, has him with only 90% support amongst African Americans. And if any of those things reflected what it really will be, because Obama will be about six, will be at 97% of African Americans will be at 70% of Hispanics. Uh, he'll be at 55 or 60% of young people. Any of those things were true, he would be ahead of his poll. I, I spend some time on this only because it is, it's not just about what you think what's going to happen in the election, it's also what you think happens in the country um, going forward and how our politics is shaped by those you know, you know, coalitions. Now, it's still it's a very tough election. This is a close election. You know, it was a three-point election essentially for all of the year for, for, in favor of President Obama. You know, 48% for him, 45% for virtually the entire year until we got into the convention period. Um, it, it went up in favor of, of President Obama, you know, who went, took a bigger lead, um, combined with the 47% video, took a bigger lead before the debates. Uh, then the debates served as almost the Republican convention, engaging their voters, rallying them around Mitt Romney, um, and uh, moving and moving the Republicans potentially into the lead for a short, you know, for a short period. But now it's settled. It's settled back down. The trend of it's not an ongoing momentum. The trend is centered back down, um, and it's centered back down, probably closer to a two, you know, two point uh, president advantage. We don't know where it'll end up. But we still have another week. Um, um, but I, you know, factoring in the where the country is on race, and I said it seems like a small question, but this is the most. Cell phone methodology is going to be the heart of this, um, and why we're, you know, why the polling is going to uh, come to reflect uh, that uh, change. The reason why this was a tough election is because it's a tough economy. It's tough short-term economy. It's a tough long-term long economy. Uh, James Carville and I wrote about this in our book. It's the middle class uh, stupid, which I, you know, which I draw on for some of what we're, um, you know, saying today. But the voters that gave Obama um, his margin. Very much young people, African Americans, Hispanics, but also better educated professionals, uh, those graduates, more affluent uh, suburban areas. Those areas, they were hit hard by the economy. Um, and they've come back, you know, reluctantly, not with that much in, uh, enthusiasm. And if you ask me what was the biggest worry I would have from my side, on the Democratic side, would be that differential in enthusiasm. There is no doubt that conservatives are more engaged. In this election, than our moderates, Republicans are more engaged than Democrats. Uh, uh, the Romney voters are more engaged than 
Obama voters, there is and it's a big gap. Um, and there's certainly a possibility that that could, uh, uh, could uh, happen. And in fact, it is not out of the question that the, that the level of anti-Obama voting uh, in the southern states, uh, and the Republican Party today, if you look at its coalition um, of states, two-thirds of its states are southern, uh, are former southern, uh, you know, southern states, southern and border states from the old south. Two-thirds of their the states that they are currently ahead of. Um, I will go back. I'm not sure what the last thing you heard. I apologize for the uh, for the interruption, uh, but I'm assuming that you can now hear me. I've been on. Yes, please. Can you hear me? Okay. I've been on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I was telling what my Republican colleagues, um, collaborators, are saying about this uh, election. Um, they tell us it's a, a toss-up election. Um, that they no, there's no idea who can win this uh, election. They believe that they're and they're right that the independents um, that Obama won uh, heavily in 2008, the independents heavily now uh, break uh, for the Republicans. Um, and that and that trend has the ability to uh, shift the battleground battleground states uh, to the has the potential to shift the battleground states uh, to Romney. Uh, Romney had an historic debate uh, uh, that shifted the race that has created momentum for him, um, and it may uh, there may be less movement on the vote now, but there's been a significant movement of uh, personal favorability that is standing with voters is uh, is much higher. Um, so he Romney's erased the favorability at a disadvantage, which is a very big factor you know, holding him uh, back. Um, and there is a great, a great intensity uh, advantage uh, going into this election. And historically, where there is this much of an intensity differential in favor of one party, which in this case is for Romney, the conservatives, and the Republican Party, that if there is a, a break in the election, which there usually is, it will break toward that intensity. Uh, that comes out on a, you know, election day uh, and impacts the, uh, the vote. Uh, and again, you ask me again, what, the one thing on, from the Democratic side will worry me, it's that intensity is, uh, advantage um, that the Democratic base, progressive voters who support Obama have come to support him, uh, but it's tough times, tough times. Uh, and normally those same voters would throw people out. Every OECD country has thrown out their leaders, as you know, as opposed to the uh, financial crisis. Um, and that's the, you know, the climate that operates. Now, as you know, uh, you, the U.S.-Israel relationship became a part of the uh, election. Um, and it was introduced not, you know, not at the uh, time um, that the Prime Minister you know, uh, um, came to the U.S. or spoke on that subject. It was raised earlier. Uh, it was a, a decision on the part of the Romney campaign to use that issue did talk about throwing uh, is, uh, Israel under the bus. Uh, and so it was, um, and, and without judging that, uh, I just want to say that if you watch the debates, it was very clear that both candidates were making very clear that they valued the strategic relationship of, uh, with Israel and that the, uh, the Iran question was central for both of them. Um, and if anything, uh, the third debate, which was one in which there was a, you know, agreement between the two candidates, that on that question, um, it's, the, it's a settled question. Um, and the, the public is actually quite supportive of taking the Iran threat for, uh, very seriously. Actually gives the, high, gives the president pretty high marks on a whole range of national security, foreign policy, and Iran-related questions. Uh, but it's not a, it is not a divisive issue between, uh, between the candidates. Maybe the candidates but not in the electorate, uh, where you actually have anything to come out of the election uh, with uh, you know, almost a consensus you know, on those questions and the ability to move forward on those you know, after the elections in the U.S. and elections in uh, uh, Israel. The Jewish community, um, I'm sure, will vote two-thirds to 70 percent uh, for you know, President uh, Obama. Um, you know, every year, you know, every election, there's going to be the year in which uh, uh, the Jewish community is going to come to a different kind of voting pattern uh, than in, uh, in the uh, past. Um, but as you all appreciate, 
Israel, you know, Israel relationship is not the main voting issue. Uh, it's pretty far down the list uh, for Jewish uh, voters. Uh, the, you know, if it were, if you look at the polling data, if it were, if the question of which candidate could better handle the U.S. Israel relationship, uh, about 40 percent of Jews um, potentially uh, could vote uh, uh, for a Republican candidate if that was what the election was about. Uh, but you should know, and this is important to the emerging coalitions, that much more important, much, much more important is abortion, much more important is uh, church-state relationships, uh, where the, uh, the Jewish community uh, takes uh, what would be defined as a, you know, a, a, a liberal position. Uh, their stands on, on, on gay marriage and a whole range of other things um, puts the Jewish community very strongly in uh, the Democratic uh, camp. It's very likely to vote happily for Obama. But it's not, it's not going to be it's not so much a factor in, in, in going forward. But what's much more important is that the U.S.-Israel teacher relationship um, was raised and debated uh, and made very clear in the debates. And in the end, I think that is helpful for all. Now, the, what is very important uh, for the United States, um, and I think for Israel, is for us to have an election, an election where we have a legitimate legitimate leader uh, who's able to govern in the face of so many uh, challenges. Um, for Americans, the most important ones are domestic. You know, how do you get to growth? How do you get back to um, having uh, middle class you know, job creation? How do you address the you know, deficit in a balanced way? How do you deal with the you know, fiscal cliff? Uh, how do you deal with health care and quality? There are just you know, many, many such uh, uh, issues. Um, and you know, when the election is done, I have no doubt that the we're going to have we're going to have to get, get back to the key strategic relationship um, with the U.S. and Israel, dealing with the, the whole range of issues from the Arab Spring to the role of Egypt to the role of the of, of Palestinian uh, you know, uh, peace. Um, you know the greatest challenge, the greatest challenge we face. You know this is an election that is waged uh, in the uh, in the context of a uh, an economic crisis. Um, a, a focus on material things, budget, spending, access, you know, deficits. Um, there was a very material election. And in that context, this was a very, you know, uh, you know close election. Um, and we could watch the dynamic of U.S. politics that every time there would be a Republican Senate candidate who would raise a, a position on abortion, um, that you know, was out of the, uh, the mainstream, um, that the cultural issue come back on the table and in fact, Republicans understand that they want this election about the economy. When James Carbo and I ran on the nine nation push campaign on the, the economy stupid, we recommend it's the middle class stupid uh, but, uh, for, uh, for this election. But it is, in both cases, it is a very kind of material, you know, material argument. But we know from the 2010 election and this election, when any of the cultural issues come up, the coalitions change. In fact, the Democratic coalition is larger when those issues are on the table. And in fact, when we get to better economic times, which many expect that to come over the next year or two, the, those material issues tend to fall back and the cultural issues become um, you know, you know, more serious. Um, so when you look at the two parties, they don't, vote, they don't differ on, on the economy. And it's not, they, don't, they don't differ so much on terms of big business or unions. If you want to know what they differ on, it's about a role. It's about the role of women. It's about uh, it's about issues like abortion. It's about rights. Um, it's about it's about the role of the family. Um, it's about uh, immigration, the role of the church. It's about rights. It's about diversity. Uh, about intolerance, multiculturalism. There is a whole range of issues and values that that are at the center of what drives each coalition. But it's taking place, and I promise you, if, uh, if if a Republican culture were here, they would be saying the same thing. It's taking place at a time when America is more <laughs> diverse. A majority of new births are non-white um, um, in our, this year. Uh, a majority of households are unmarried. Um, there is sharply declining church affiliation and attendance at all levels, from the best educated down to you know the working class. Um, there's uh, Growth, Hispanic growth, um, uh, forming the largest minority. Um, there is a young population. We are, we are a country that has a growing young, young population with, with high birth rates. 
we have in migration, um, both legal and non-legal, um, that makes that deeply affects the position of the two parties, not just which groups they're supporting, but their attitude related to, you know, all of those things and how you, you know, you know, manage it. Um, one of the big issues the Republican Party will face after the election is uh, is the electoral college map. Even if they manage to win, if you look at this electoral college map, it is very difficult to elect the president of the United States if your only you know, your only votes are coming from the you know the big southern states and border states. Um, and with only a few small western states added on top of that to form a national majority. There will be, regardless of what happens in the election, there will, there will be, I think, move to deal with immigration. Um, because you can't get, it's, it, those kinds of issues have to be settled. And I think, I actually think there's going to be tremendous pressure uh, in the U.S., regardless of outcome, whether Romney wins or Obama wins, um, uh, for a short um, to address our debt to address immigration, to address you know, issues like tax reform, uh, to address energy, whether it's real opportunity. Uh, you look at the book that James Carville and I wrote, the last chapter is, is, a, you know, is about the gridlock that keeps us from making progress. But it, it outlines those issues where if you really look under the surface, including the health care reform, the issues that have become polarized and partisan you know, are actually fairly, there, are, there is a common ground um, for us to, you know, to get to those. Um, the you know, whether we you know whether we get the outcome or not that produces that we'll see. For us, for, for us in this uh, view in the room, JPPI, the Jewish community, the point I would make is that the the political dynamics that are shaping the U.S. the political dynamics and cultural dynamics that are shaping the long-term coalition um, have bearing on the view of the of Israel as a Jewish state. Um, and Israel-Palestinian relations and security relationships, um, and the developing dynamics on the Israeli side of a similar kind um, have their own dynamic. Um, and long term, maybe even medium term, the interaction of those two dynamics really create the context in which we have to figure out how do we develop strategies to sustain Israel uh, and the Jewish community. But that's not, that's for another day. So, Help to be part of it, help to work with new, I actually give it to